Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing incels. Incels. I don't know a better way to put that. Incels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Involuntary celibates and the community that has developed around them. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Sex in a Canoe (laughs) from the Noble Ray Brewing Company in Dallas, Texas. Sex in a Canoe. Uh, if, If you are involuntarily celibate, it may be because you're trying to have sex in a canoe. Well, I don't know. We'll see how good sex in a canoe is here in a second. <laughs> I think it'd be kind of tough. Ah, uh, uh, there's a joke about sex in a canoe, but I don't remember what it was. Damn. Somebody look it up and comment down below. That'll be fun. Um, uh, so anyway, you may have heard recently in newsy type places that... Um, newsy type places. That's we a- don't actually have news anymore, <laughs> uh, but, we, but we do have newsy type places. I actually think that's one of the most accurate descriptions of our modern uh, news program. Yeah. There is. Oh, yeah. That's that's my go-to title for that now. And newsy type places. Well, I mean, because like, I think for some episodes, we could be considered doing newsy things. Um, yeah, I don't you know, even, disc- I, I would never consider us news in any discussing form Discussing, like, current events and, and how things are impacting today's society. Um, you yeah, know, we're, just, we're just three drunks that like talking. You have, uh, you have places like BuzzFeed that definitely discuss current events, um, and they, they do have their finger on the pulse of society. Um, think what you want about them. I know they have serious left leanings. Um, but I mean, yeah, they're yeah. newsy type places. So I mean, you were you were commenting that we're just three drunks who like talk about things. I've seen the scandals that come out of those news organizations. <laughs> I think there's a whole room full of drunks who I, like talk about things. I think things. you're probably right. Yeah. All right, so uh, whenever I, I brought this up earlier in the week, that uh, this, this is how well we prepare for this stuff. Yes. I think it was Wednesday afternoon. I sent a message. What are we talking about? Uh, nobody knew, so we came up with this. And and I threw out, hey, how about incels? And I got the greatest response ever. I get, I get seriously from Anna. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, I, you know, yeah, I, I had I had very little understanding of, of the incel community until I got into this, and uh, I, I started. I was watching a Joe Rogan Experience podcast, mm-hmm. and they were interviewing uh, Peter, Jordan Peterson, the, uh, right. the psychologist. I don't know if he's a psychiatrist, psychiatrist or psychologist, the mind doctor, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, they were talking about about the incel community, the brainy I, type doctor. Yeah, yeah, and I found it. Uh, I found it fast. Oh, you almost, everybody almost had to finish their beer. Uh, I always do that early, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so exactly, let, let's talk about what, the, what what an incel is here. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes from the, the merging of, of the two words, involuntary celibacy, mm-hmm. okay? So it's somebody that, 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 that wants to have sex but right. is not Yeah, so they're to. not asexual and they're not... Uh, Choosing to be celibate. They're not choosing to be celibate. Uh, They're a self-identified online subculture. Uh, This is from the wiki here. They define themselves as unable to find a romantic or sexual partner despite desiring one. Yes. Um, This was actually, this dates back a while. I I didn't realize how how old this term was. Uh, Back in 1993, uh, a Canadian college student who just went by her first name, Alana. I I don't know what her last name is or whatever, but Alana had started this this, uh, website about her struggles with uh, with sexuality, well, with sex. Right. With sexuality, with sex. And she kind of coined this phrase, incel. Mm -hmm. Uh, But she meant for that community to be a very positive thing, a place where people that struggle with this More like a support group. A support group. Um, the, but but the, the this this celibacy project that she an involuntary celibacy project that she, as she called it, uh, kind of kind of kind of grew and, and, and ballooned and she ended up uh, eventually getting in a relationship and turned it over to somebody else, and since then she's been interviewed about this and and she says she regrets ever starting this yeah. because the movement is not about that anymore, the movement it seems at least to be uh, a, a very uh, a, a very violent movement at times, um, and and it, it's something that, that that's hard for me to get a grip on with this. Yeah. Um, it, go ahead. It, it's ironic that uh, it, the whole thing was started by a woman because if you go to incels.me, which is as far as their I main can, forum, there yeah, are as, others. And, 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 as far yeah. as I can tell, the 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 main uh, uh, forum for for discussion on this, females are not allowed to join the forum. 
Yeah, uh, the the psychologist uh, Jordan Peterson. When I was watching that, I think it was his name. Uh, yeah, it was. Jordan Peterson said that uh, you know the the main subgroup are are white males, middle class of you know twenty to thirty somethings. Yeah, you know, yeah. which you know. Is that are you are you an incel well, or are you just a a, well, a, a, a a white male and in their twenties? That's a little confused. Yeah, well, fringe groups are almost exclusively, and, and I'm, I do mean truly fringe groups, not slightly odd, um, but fringe groups are almost exclusively comprised of white males in that age range, middle class. Part of that is that's the largest group in our society. That's part of it, and I think there's also um, there is social capital to expend. Um, you can be a part of one of those groups and still have some, some social capital. Um, you know, as a black female, you have a lot less social capital to expend when you're already yeah. uh, fending off onslaughts from society just for being a black female. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that that's probably it, true. It's funny you said 20 to 30s, because actually, and, and this is, you know, a, a couple of days worth of research, so I, I don't want to act like I'm some expert on the subject, but in, in my research, uh, mostly revolving around actually going around incels.me and reading some of their material, uh, I've found it's actually a younger group than that. Yeah, some like twelve reaching, to twenty-seven or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah some reaching into their low thirties. Yeah, but, I, I think low thirties is what he was talking but about. Yeah, but mostly yeah, mostly in their mostly twenties, fifteens yeah. to to maybe upper twenties. A lot of them are college students. Um, uh, I've seen high school students. A bunch. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's there's some of those out there. Um, and in, in the interest of fairness, um, when I first thought of this, I my first gut instinct was. There's no such thing as an incel. This is not really a, a, a group. This is this is somebody looking for a label, but it's mm -hmm. not really anything. Uh, you know, the, the, it, it's not a it's not a psychological disorder. Mm -hmm. If if the way to cure it is to uh, take a shower, brush your hair, put on some deodorant, and work out a little bit, you know. Uh, but very the, blue pill. Yeah, but 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 the more I looked, we'll at get this, into those terms later. Yeah, we'll talk about the red, blue, and black pills here in a little while. But the more I looked into this, uh, the more I realized that I, I I think this this is a real psychological uh, disorder, and it may be something that you you outgrow. Yeah. Well, and I don't necessarily know that incel itself is a psychological disorder. However, um, one of the things that you will see prevalent in this community. Um, you see a, a lot of autistics. You see a lot yeah. of. Um, I, th I think that's As probably Asperger's. probably correct. I don't I, I don't think incel is the psychological disorder, but I think you find a lot of psychological disorders in the incel community. Yeah, mm -hmm. you yeah, see I a think, lot I of think depression. I think you're correct there. Yeah. Bipolar, all sorts of things there. Um, in, the incel community took Reddit by storm. Yes. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I am I am a. Uh, Technical idiot and don't know don't know jack shit about Reddit. So Reddit is crack. <laughs> it is the Reddit front page is of the online internet. crack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, you know, I, I got looking at some numbers here here, uh, and the incel subreddit. Uh, it, it's since been banned by, right. by by Reddit. It was it was banned in for November of two thousand seventeen for inciting violence. Yes. Uh, but it had forty thousand members when it was banned. Yeah. Well, and to be fair here. Um, Part of the nature of Reddit is there are a dick load of trolls on there. Yeah, um, that's a good way to put that. <laughs> is a group of trolls a dick load? I think it should be. That's, that's the new term. Everybody yes. start using that. And, and, and my next question is 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 whose dick do you use to measure that by? Because that could be that could be a different amount depending on what you're talking about. Is well, it, is it a duck's dick that just got the? So we had to go. I to had duck to get dick. the duck in. I yeah. had to get you, the duck in. The duck had to. Never, you never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> So anyway, um, don't judge me. There are like, there are a dick load of trolls on Reddit. That's kind of like them and 4chan. Like that's what they're known for. Um, yeah, Reddit is 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 not as bad. Monitored 4chan, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and so, I I think part of that forty thousand and possibly not saying a majority, but probably a nice chunk. Yeah, but of those are people trolling. But e even if even if you say half of them are, mm -hmm. there's twenty thousand people. Yeah, and uh, that is which is you know not insignificant. Not insignificant. It's, I mean, it, it, it's 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 not a large percentage of the population, but that's a pretty big pretty big number. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's look at something more more um, uh, significant to it because, um, and this has nothing to do with with 4chan. Yes, there may be trolls involved, mm -hmm. but um, 
when I was, I, I sent a screenshot to the group earlier when I was on incels.me, which is a website that yeah. started by incels, maintained incels, by them, yes. And it doesn't have a bunch of other people kind of bleeding over. Right. That's where that's um, where John spends his Saturday nights. Is on incels.me. Tuesdays. Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday yeah, yeah. Nights. Actually, it was um, it was Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I went down to the very bottom. You can see what members are online, and there are there were at the time uh, one thousand and twenty one people online on a Saturday night on incels.me. Now that's actually impressive because one of the figures that I saw. Um, in, in fact, this was um, this was a reporter arguing for um, censoring incels, making it you know taking down their uh, their websites, um, hosts not allowing them to maintain those websites because every time one of their uh, little internet communities gets shut down, then a new one pops up, but that they lose members and. One of the things that was cited there was that, yes, the Reddit subthread had 40,000 people on it. But then when they moved to incels.me, they only had 6,000. And it's actually impressive that they had 1,000 people online of a community of 6,000. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to I share a little bit more depth there. Of those, only 161 were members, but 860 were guests. But here's, here's something interesting I found from that is I think a significant portion of those guests are actually people that want to be there. And the reason I say that <laughs> yeah is there was a whole sub-thread on being banned, and there was actually a thread with, or, or a whole forum being banned, and there was actually a thread in that forum where a guy was talking about where he had requested to be banned because he didn't want to be outed as part of the community, but he yeah. was, in fact, part of the community. He just didn't want to be found out. So yeah, I'm, in fact, I, I saw that elsewhere as well. Um, that a lot of the people who are in this community don't want to be found out to be in the community. Yeah. And, and so they do use the forums as guests. Yeah. Yeah. It, which, is, which is interesting whenever you start seeing this stuff. This community, uh, again, trying to get an understanding of it, because one of the first things I came across was the Southern Poverty Law Center, which mm -hmm. I, I, I've mentioned on the show before. I'm always a little nervous about the Southern Poverty Law Center because they have a political agenda. Right. Uh, but the Southern Poverty Law Center uh, describes this, uh, th this, this subculture as part of the online male supremacy ecosystem. Yeah, the manosphere. And, uh, the manosphere, yeah. And has actually put uh, put this on their list of hate groups. Yeah. Uh, for, so I started thinking, you know, what what, what could you possibly what, what could possibly be a hate group about being involuntarily celibate? And I start seeing some of the terminology and some of the the, the, the things that start coming out of out of this. And uh, it's one of these these subcultures that you you kind of have to know the terminology to understand what they're talking about. Um, you, you want to talk to us a little bit about this, John? Yeah, we, we can a, a little bit. So so I, I've actually been researching and trying to... Uh, I've had to, to figure out a lot of this terminology in order to really follow these threads. Um, you know, um, and there's some, there's some terminology that I can't regurgitate to you now that I can kind of understand in context, but I think there's probably nuance I'm missing there. Yeah. Um, so there's three pills they talk about, the black pill, the blue pill, and the red pill. Yeah. Um, Red and blue coming from the Matrix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So black pill is is those who have accepted the ideology of the community. They they are in cells and they they just accept that they are genetically inferior people. That life has dealt them a bad hand and that they will will not. That do But there's well. nothing they can do about it. Yeah, that, yeah. That the, they're the, hopeless. The, these people. Uh, the definition I found for the black pill, pillars is that they. Uh, uh, they they hold that personality is not what's important. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's it's the winners of the biological lottery yep. of looks and wealth that are yep. going to get everything. And, yep. and they lost the lottery. That's yeah. kind of the way they see it. Red yeah. pillars are kind of the opposite of that. They're the ones who won the lottery, and 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 they they've kind of Anna's looking weird. Um, uh, do, you, do you take a different definition to red pill? Okay. I do. I'm going to go through my red pill and blue pill, and then you can come back and, and correct anything. Because, like I said, I'm not an expert on this, and I may be wrong. So red, red pillars are kind of those that have, have won the lottery, and, and they, um, uh, you know, they're, they're doing well. The blue pillars are the ones who still buy into the ideology, but they're not the lottery winners. They just, they just still believe that, you know, your personality and what you do can affect things and make things better. And they believe this, but but they're, they they probably belong in the black pill community. They just they're confused. They're not there yet. Yeah, you're mostly backwards on that. So, um, 
if you reference the Matrix, when Neo was offered the blue pill and the red pill, the blue pill, um, he would stay in the make-believe world and the status quo would remain the same. Um, it actually has nothing to do with whether or not you've won the genetic lottery. Um, whereas the red pill, you would wake up, you would see all of the... You would see the system for what it is. Um, however, the difference between a red pill and a blue or and a black pill is that with the red pill, you're still what they call a coper. And so you try to improve your appearance and you try to improve your social relations and you try to improve your standing in the community. You try to move up that social ladder. Um, whereas with the black pill, you realize that the deck is so stacked against you that there's no point in attempting to try to cope and move up that social ladder that you're just stuck down there. Okay. Yeah. So, so then describe blue pill. You, you said I was... Uh, <clears throat> well, blue pill is just, you know, you don't see the problems with the system. Yeah, okay. there is no problem. Yeah. It, it, right. The system works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that may be right. I uh, uh, Again, <clears throat> I, I was trying to read through this stuff. And, right. Uh, the, the other term that we see a lot, and we see this, and I actually encountered this term a lot in our monogamy, polygamy, and what was the one? It was on kinks. We didn't call it that. It was... Paraphilia. 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 Yeah. Uh, they talk about normies a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I've, I've as I've delved into these shows, I found normie to be a really interesting concept because uh, it, it, it's kind of a, a platonic no, not platonic. Plutonic. No. Pluto. Pluto. Pl yeah, yeah, Plato. Plato. Platonic. Platonic. Platonic, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, in its nature, in that uh, each of these subcultures believes like they're the weirdos, and then there's this big 70, 80% that are normal, and they're all normies. But as you really kind of start to look at different people, the people who fit into this normie category are so small that it's almost like this idealistic yeah. normal yeah. person that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's leave it to Beaver. Yeah. Well, it, and it is. Um, however, I think that that happens whenever you are trying to define a normie according to all of the subgroups. Mm -hmm. Because in the incel community, a normie is somebody who buys into the system. Somebody's um, on the inside. Yeah, exactly. Um, in the meme community, a normie is somebody who um, has a, a very structured idea of what a meme is and what makes a meme funny. Um, and, and you can pull that out in the... Uh, paraphilia community it is somebody who likes very vanilla sex and doesn't like anything um that could be considered to be taboo and so with each of those subgroups they are a small group with normies being a, a bigger thing and they're just focused on one aspect so i think that normies is a very large group of people depending on which subgroup it is that you're talking What's about. What's funny and I don't is those, those normies probably belong to a different subgroup, too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and they do. But I don't think any one of these subgroups is trying to say that um, they're not trying to apply every subgroup's definition to normies to yeah, find this yeah. idealistic person. Nor normie in opposed to this condition. Yeah. 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 Well, and what they're doing is um, you, you've said you've been told maybe don't be weird. I tell you that all the time. But, uh, you know, don't be funny. How's that working out for you? Not great. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I think fuck what they're... Fucking normie. Fuck off. <laughs> we can have that talk if you want to. But um, let's not. Anyway. I'm Chad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I think what it is is it's kind of flipping that weirdo dynamic on its head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, of making fun of the small group of people who are outside of the norm and flipping it around and saying, y'all are just fucking normies. Yeah. yeah. You know. Hey, John, let's talk about Chad a little bit. Tell, yeah. me, tell me about Chad. So, so uh, two other terms that I think go hand in hand is Chad and Stacy. Uh, Chad being the the football player, alpha male, you know, has no problems getting the females, and Stacy being the cheerleader type that Chad, the guy that all the incels are trying to go after, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that everybody in their mind is trying to go after, yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to be a Chad or a Stacy, uh, yeah. you know, and, and and some some can't do it, right? Yeah. Unless you've black pilled, and then you don't want to be a Chad because Chads are losers, <sighs> yeah, and losers assholes. who are successful at everything. They're assholes anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, so because of this movement, uh. If you're if you're in this movement and, and you've accepted this black pill argument, you've accepted the idea that 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 uh, 
that it is not your fault mm -hmm. that that society or 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 the the evolutionary biological lottery has deemed you to be this this incel. Uh, some a, a, a subgroup of this are going to start teaching uh, violence towards uh, towards others, and they're going to start even talking about something called sexual redistribution. Um, I, I, I saw this on the Jordan Peterson interview on uh, on Joe Rogan and, and, and later on on a, uh, on a Bill Maher, Maher episode. Do you want to talk first about this idea of theirs of hy hypergamy? Sure. Okay. Um, so one of the things that it seems that large portions of the incel community seem to believe is that there's something going on called hypergamy. I've seen a couple of different definitions of this. However, um, the one that seems to be most prevalent, at least in what I've read, is the idea that chads are going around and they are not just banging Stacy's, but they're banging all the Uggos too. And that is, uh, that is incel terminology. I mean, yeah. not, not specifically, obviously we've heard it elsewhere, but that is, I'm saying that's how they would classify yeah. them, not how I'm classifying them. Um, but yeah, we so, know how you are. <laughs> um, if you're watching the YouTube, you just got to treat. Uh, <laughs> Sexist bitch. <laughs> fuck off, asshole. <laughs> so anyway, um, but so they're saying that the chads are due to hypergamy, no longer just chasing Stacy's, but they're banging Stacy's and they're banging all the uggos. And that what that's doing is essentially keeping all of the women sexually satisfied and, and banging yeah. the top tier of men and leaving nothing, leaving no scraps for the incels to yeah, bang. Yeah, well, that, that was the direction I was trying to get with this. When, oh, when, sorry. Mo moving into this was the idea of sexual redistribution was that just as, as society has wealth redistribution from the haves to the have-nots, that it's only just that we have sexual redistribution as well. And there's different ways to go about this. There's a, there's a movement to to uh, make prostitution legal. That that that, right. that could be a solution. Uh, but I'm there, game. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I all think it solves a lot legalize of Legalize everything. Yeah. You know, but, I'm really I'm really torn on this one because I, I think there are a lot of arguments to legalize prostitution, and this ain't one of them. Yeah, well, but I, I'm I'm with you. I think well, it's a bad argument for it, but I still yeah. think we should do it. But the other side is. Uh, just as we take wealth from the haves and give to the have-nots, we should take sex mm -hmm. from uh, f from those who uh, who have and give to the have-nots. Issue tags. Uh, well, yeah, and, and essentially, essentially, and force women to have sex with these incels because it's not fair to them that they uh, that, that they that they they're not allowed to. I'm just saying, uh, I would become like reverse Jack the Ripper. Well, it's an interesting idea, though, and, I, and, and honestly, even if he you know, banged, he killed I, prostitutes yeah, theoretically. Obviously, uh, obviously, I'm, kill jobs, I'm not a supporter of this idea, but the logical uh, steps that they go through are not different than the logical steps right. we went through in, w with our tax system. Yeah, uh, you know, of coming through here and saying, "Look, these people have evolutionary advantages uh, that allow them to have sexual relations that I don't have. Therefore, to balance the scales, we should require women to engage in sexual relationships with others." Mm -hmm. What do you think about that argument? I mean, even we're not talking about the morality here. We'll get to right. that in a minute. What do you think about the argument? Well, I don't agree with wealth redistribution, so it's easy for me to say I think that's a terrible argument. Yeah. Um, I do see how they logically get there, given uh, other systems in which we have used that same logic. So, John, I mean, I, I, I'm trying. Here, here's what I wish I could package up really nicely and put a bow on. An argument that is unique from the reasons we shouldn't do it in a tax system um, that shows why this is different and we shouldn't do it. And, and all the arguments... Sex I'm, redistribution is rape? Well, all, all the arguments... Well, it is. All, all the... Ar well, taxation is theft. Yeah, That's absolutely. what I was it's the same coming argument. from. Yeah, same but, argument. But um, all the arguments I'm coming to are the exact same counter-arguments, which tells me that, yeah, it's the same. I mean, I'm thinking, like, you have no right to the fruit of another person's body, but that's just a different of... Fruit you, of another person's labor, yeah. Fruit yeah. of another... You know, I, I think of it, so I guess, but, yeah, it's... A, I don't know if you guys have ever had sex before, but sex is work. Like, it's fun work. If you do it right. it's work. If you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you can just lay there for three minutes, you know? Yeah. Don't do that. 
Huh? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, It'll be hey, an incel. For 500 bucks. <laughs> I will you nap with me. you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but yeah, all the arguments for why this, sh- in my mind, for why this shouldn't be a thing, except for, and you know, to me, and, and, and a lot of people who, who don't engage in debate a lot are going to say, yeah, but it's rape. And to me, that's a terrible argument, right? Uh, um, right. Because it, 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 it foundationally lays on a bunch of other arguments that you're leaning on without understanding or referencing of mm-hmm. why rape is bad. So your, your argument needs to be more fundamental to why people have sovereignty of their body or something like that. Yeah, well, and I think you could easily say sex, sexual redistribution is theft because what you are doing is, is stealing a person's agency. Um, so, so what I was saying is Sorry, that I, 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 I don't think that's a good argument because the, the only thing that needs to happen to completely defeat your argument is the thing that's happened with taxation where people have come through and said and redefined the terms to say, no, taxation isn't theft because we all benefit. We voted for it. Yeah. We voted for it, yeah. whatever. Yeah, and we then, have less mass shooters because we are making sure everybody's getting laid. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, and, if, if, we, if we as a society voted to require sexual redistribution, would it then be okay? Yeah, well, it's not rape because yeah. Congress voted was rape. Yeah. So yeah. all we have to do then is redefine a few terms or take a few votes and all of a sudden it's not rape right. and all of a sudden it's okay. So I think it's a very weak argument uh, uh, and all it requires is a few societal slippages to change. Yeah. So I think your argument needs to be more... It needs found- to have a foundation. Yeah. Yes, of, yes. Of, of, it needs to have a foundation of I own me. Yes. I own me, you don't own me. Well, and then that still falls apart when you get into the subsets here who genuinely believe that women should be property. Um, and, and they do. Uh, there, there was a guy named Sam Louis. Uh, I don't know if that's his real name, but he's that, that's the name he goes by on all the incel community sites. Uh, and he was on a, a radio station. I've forgotten which one. I didn't write it down. But he, this is a quote from him. He said, taking the black pill means I will now support violence, hatred, and misogyny. Mm-hmm. This is somebody that's saying, I've, I, I've accepted this. This is my place. And I will now, you know, by, by violence, I'm willing to do violence towards, towards, uh, towards men and women. Uh, uh, I, I hate you because you have something, and you know misogyny is. You, you know, and women are women are not equal. Women yeah. are, are inferior. Can I make a little PSA here? Yeah. Armed women are hard to violate and make bad property. Yeah, yeah. I just want to throw that yeah, out there. Yeah. Teach your uh, teach your wives and your daughters to shoot uh, and defend themselves. There's, there's yeah, I, I was going to say, and defend themselves without a gun as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you, you can be armed with more than a gun. You can yes. be armed. You got damn right. You can be armed with your mind, uh, all this stuff. All right, so the, 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 the sexual redistribution idea, I think we can, we can pretty much, much throw out. Uh, but let's talk about some of the byproducts of this community because there are two big things that happened. Uh, in fact, let's talk about this beer first because we're going to get we're going to go pretty dark here in just a minute, and I want to talk about this the beer nice before beer. we do it. Uh, we are talking about "Sex in a Canoe" <laughs> by uh, Noble we Ray Brewing such Company. Children. Yeah, uh, sex in, in sex a canoe. In a canoe. <laughs> uh, who wants to start this one? Nobody. Uh, I, I, I can. I, 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 I can start ahead. it. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, what's the ABV on this? Anybody look it up? Uh, uh, four point two. Four point two. So it's water. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think this is a good beer. I, I, I am not a fan at all. Uh, it's 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 incredibly light. It's uh, honestly, it, it, it tastes like a. Uh, it tastes to me like a. Um, like a decent mass-produced beer. It's not. It, and it, it's not a. It's not at all. All crafty to me. There's nothing special about it. Uh, if they would have put this in a Bud Light can, I wouldn't have been surprised if I drank it. I would have uh, been. No, I, I just don't. I don't. I don't see it as being anything special. Well, no, you're not Bud Light, but as a, okay. a, a but but but, but a, a mass-produced beer. It's a uh, Rolling Rock. A Rolling Rock, maybe. Yeah. It's. It. You know. I think. If you gave this to me and, and told me that this is a you know this is an Anheuser Busch beer, I go, this is a decent beer. This is a decent beer. They're but doing if you, all right today. But if you tell me that this is a craft beer, I, it just doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah. Uh, I am not going to rate this beer high at all. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go one eight. Okay. I, I'm going to go a little higher than you. I'll go ahead with my rating. I'm going to go two two. Hmm. Still not a great rating. Um. To me, this tastes like. Uh, slightly, uh, uh, um, I'm not brewed. What's the word? Um, Lagered? No. 
No, slightly. W- the process of taking sugars and converting them fermented. to slightly fermented um, hop tea. Um, Interesting. It, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's like they took a little bit of hops and a little bit of sugar, put it in water, dipped the little tea bag of hops in there, and then <laughs> let it ferment for just a little while. I'm getting a little bit of the bitters. I mean, it's very low. It's it's only 8 IBU. Um, it's it's very light, but it's very much water. Um, and there's no complexity there. There's no... There's not subtle flavors that you can catch. It's just a little bit of hop, a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar, and fermented. So. Yeah. Well, I think this beer actually hits the nail on the head for what it is claiming to be. It is an American light lager. Um, I would agree with that. I, yeah, I I think I don't like American light lagers particularly. So well, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, it it is light. Um, I think that makes it a great summer beer um you know it's not something that is going to it's the first time this beer and the word great have ever been used in the same sentence well here's why because it is not going to dehydrate you no while you are outside run, running around uh that's partially because it is a 4.2 abv um, and that's partially just because it is so light on flavor um it's not bitter so it's not kind of making your mouth pucker dry out or anything like that um, I don't think that the flavor is bad. It's just forgettable. Blah. It's blah. I feel like in a couple of weeks when we're looking for beer again, I'm going to pass by it and go, have we had that before? Like, it's that forgettable. A lot of beers take a few months. You know, this one, I expect I will not remember in a couple of weeks. So it doesn't taste bad. I think it is what it claims to be. If offered this, I would drink it again. Um, but I would not lay compliments on the hander of the beer. Uh, I would accept it and say thank you and be all kind and polite and everything. But I wouldn't be like, damn, you picked a good beer. Good for you. Um, Because I I do try to encourage people who buy craft beers to continue to do that because everybody should drink craft beer. Everybody should drink craft beer. Everybody who drinks beer should drink craft beer. And everybody should drink beer. Well, we can have that discussion. But... um, (laughs) But no, so with that, I actually wrote my uh, my rating down, um, like right as John was doing his, and I'm coming in right between you guys at a two. Okay, so um, it sounds like a pretty fair rating for the three of us. Yeah, I, I think so. I think there's a lot that could be done um, to make this a better beer, but unfortunately, I think anything that I could see being done to it would actually kind of take it out of that category. You know what I find funny is I think three years ago, I would have been the high rating on this when we started mm-hmm. the show. Uh, you know, it's just I've I, I, I gotten to where I don't like these light beers as much anymore. So it's it's funny how, how, how things change. Still wouldn't have rated it good, I don't think. But uh, yeah. uh, It's got a cinnamony you know, play our game? to it a little bit. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Is it a it lawnmower beer? Late. Is it a lawnmower beer? Uh, this is not only a lawnmower beer. This is a I'm going to hydrate myself by running a 5K beer. Okay. <laughs> this, is, yeah. th- 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 this beer is so light. Iron Man beer. This is so light that you can do this while performing in <laughs> yes. the Olympics. Noble Ray. Whenever um, Dallas has its little marathon that they do, I know they do several, but, you know, whatever it is, um, you should, like, stand by where the runners are going, right next to the water fountain, uh, water station, maybe even right before it, I would and be, just hand out this beer. It'll be great. And bottles I, so they can grab yeah. it while they're running by. Yeah, exactly. I would be okay with my heart surgeon do, drinking this before he goes in and does surgery on yeah. me. I'm just... Uh, uh, yeah. Can you uh, drink it fast enough to actually get a buzz? <laughs> yes. What This is a good... Um, Shotgun beer. Yeah. So yeah. so yes yes lawnmower. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Date. Uh, so as far as the date goes, I mean, the only place I would ever use this is if you're going like on a picnic, or you're going to be on the beach, be or maybe beach you're beer. taking them to like a racetrack date. So yeah. like you don't want to get too inebriated, so you can still drive. Yeah, you need to be outdoors or, doing something. Or you're but, dating that girl that really doesn't like beer. Maybe. No, I don't know. Maybe, no, because I think this is. I don't think this yeah. is going to convince. I don't know. That I think it's, I think it's light enough that they that they drink it. I don't know. Maybe yeah. not. But anyway, um, so that's where I'd put it. I mean, I'm really not going to recommend this to anybody. But if somebody's like, dude, I need something where I can stay hydrated. Uh, we we ha- we have a date plan, and it, it's going to be a, uh, a ten hour sex marathon. Here, take I'll, this. And I'll, I'll tell you hydrated. what. If you if. If you're canoeing down the river, there, there, there's, oh, there's yeah, a good theme yeah. here for yeah. you. You know, it'd be, it, it, 
This that, that's Especially what is Especially if you're trying to, to hint them. Yes. You, do, you want, want to hint, do you want sex in a canoe? Do you want sex in a canoe? <laughs> yeah. And if I they eagerly take it and say canoe? yes, then uh, we move on to the next one hey, and hey, you get laid. Now, they say, they say yes. Does that count as consent? Do you want sex in a canoe? Yes. It depends on what they're looking at whenever they say say yes. If they're looking at you, yes. If they're looking at the can, all they want is the beer. <laughs> if they're reaching for your zipper, you know you're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what if you put it in your pants? <laughs> ask, ask them first. It's still ambiguous. It's still ambiguous. 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 We'll see what they pull out of the zipper. Okay. So uh, this beer I do not think gets you laid. Um, it's not special enough. I, I think that your beer has to have some quality yeah. that makes it memorable. Um, and this, this just doesn't have it. Yeah. So yeah, it I'll does not great. get you late. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are we done with the beer stuff? I think so. All right. You guys keep us rolling. I got something to do. Oh All shit. Right. Um, are we I, broken? I, I want to talk a little bit about how, um, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit dark here and talk, talk with you a little bit because okay. there is a, uh, there are at least appears. No, no, I, I, I'm putting appears out there because nobody's gone right. through and, and, and broke down the data. But it appears that there's a higher than normal uh, rate of suicide and violence in this community. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, well, well, let's talk a little bit about this this, this suicide uh, because over and over again, you can go on YouTube and watch videos of this stuff. You can yeah. see case after case of people raging against the system and how. You know, they, 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 you know, they're, I'm, I'm 25 years old and I've never had sex and, and, and I want to have sex and they're, they're really raging on this system. And the hopelessness drives them to suicide. There have been yeah. several YouTubers uh, uh, in the, involved in this community that have committed suicide. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, is, 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 is it just, dep- is, is this just depression or is there something different happening here? I think it's inherent in the community, and I, I think that's unfortunate. I'm a little concerned that you brought a big picture there. Are you going to mix all this and make punch? What are we doing here? No, I'm Don't not. give him ideas. <laughs> I am done with this. <laughs> oh, that's what that's for. And I'm going to grab something else. Here, you want? Yeah. There. Oh, there you all go. Right. So, I, I hope you guys are watching on YouTube, and, and if you are listening that's on, on your um, favorite podcast yeah, yeah. platform, um, you should check out our YouTube, because yeah. we do... It's amazing. Funny things it's amazing. that don't come across on the microphone a lot, um, and I'm not going to tell you quite what happened there. Sometimes not funny things, but we find it amusing. What do you want? We yes. got a UFO. We got dragons and yum yums. We got an arrogant zebra. bastard. Give me an arrogant bastard. I'll, there we I'll go. Try one of those. Those, 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 those were that actually is good, kind of fitting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, John, we were talking while you were while you were on about, your uh, about the suicide. Yeah, yes. yeah. On, while you were yeah. on your uh, rations run uh, about. Suicide yeah. with this. Do you think that this is something that's that's because of the community, or is it just a byproduct of depression? Yes. Um, so I, I think it's just a byproduct of depression. I, I think that's what kicks it off. But I think being involved in such a negative, tiny feedback social loop. bubble, feedback loop be another way to put that, actually drives it harder. Yeah. But I, I think that there would be some element of this regardless of, of whether that little feedback loop existed, I think it just accentuates it, as social bubbles tend to do. Yeah. So yeah. I, I actually want to talk about Jack Peterson. Yep. Not to be confused with uh, mind doctor Jordan Peterson that we were talking about earlier. Um, Jack Peterson was, an, well, is an incel, self-identifies mm-hmm. as an incel, Um part of the community for a long time. I want to say he said he was part of the community since he was 12. Long time. I hate to interrupt, but I have to say, sex in a canoe will really make you appreciate an arrogant bastard. It really will. It really will. Um, So anyway, he's been a part of this community for a really long time. After the Elliot Roger uh, incident, which we haven't, we've managed not to touch on at all yet. I'm I'm going to cover all of those, yeah. Yeah. Um, So after the Elliot Roger incident, he kind of went to the community and he said, guys, um, you know, most of us aren't Elliot Rogers. Um, Most of us are not into the idea of like committing acts of violence against women or people in general. Um, and, and I think we need somebody to go out into the greater community 
um, communicate with the media and let them know our side of it because the incel community was largely silent. Most of the information that people were getting were from going into places like incels.me or uh, the Reddit on sub the Reddit on subthread. Yeah, <laughs> the, the subthread Subreddit, on Reddit. Yeah, huh. yeah. Um, I, I don't remember the name of that one, but. Um, but you know, going into there and just reading the threads. And so they weren't getting individual contact with anybody in the incel community. And a few people kind of came back and were like, yeah, you know, we think that's a good idea. And he had no intention of that person speaking with the media being him, but it kind of turned into that. Mm -hmm. We know how that goes when you say somebody should do something and everybody looks at you, look at, looks at you and goes, so do it. Um, why, why does that always happen to us? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and so he did. He started talking to the media and everything. And as of a month ago, he actually posted. So he had started a um, something called Incelcast. It was yeah. a podcast he was doing, um, publishing to his YouTube channel. And um, they only did a few episodes. And he had been doing a lot of media three, appearances. Yeah, there were three uh, three episodes. Um <laughs> And he was doing a lot of media appearances. And he came out a month ago and he said, I'm leaving the incel community. And the reason that he said that was um, he said that doing all of these media appearances and everything like that made him kind of realize just how boring and unfulfilling his life was sitting behind a computer screen, um, talking on these forums, making thousands of posts a month on these forums, doing this this podcast that he was doing, um, that it was boring and that it was significantly contributing to a negative mindset that he had and that he wanted to improve his life and he didn't feel like he could because this community by its nature drags you down. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be a part of the community and not be say negative things and think and feel negative things. You know, I, I, I can understand that completely. Yeah. I really can. Uh, you, you know, uh, related but off topic, I, I've mentioned on the show, I just, I, I shut myself out of Facebook about a month ago completely, just and haven't, haven't logged back on. And it was because the negativity on there mm-hmm. was affecting me, you oh, know? Yeah. Now, that that's Facebook. That's nothing. Right. Imagine being in a community like this and, mm-hmm. and, and, and being drawn into it. Well, yeah. and I, I think it's really easy for outsiders to look at this community and say, yes, haha, see that that shows how bad they are. But I think what what should be taken away from this is a broader lesson about climbing outside your fucking bubble. Whatever your bubble is, yeah. your bubble isn't special. If you live in an echo chamber, you have the, a problem. Get into yeah. the world. That's Just, right. you know, whatever that is. Yeah. The world's a big, beautiful place. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we and had, sometimes ugly. You know, we yes. had we had this discussion earlier outside mm-hmm. on the thing about blocking people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I consciously when I when I was on Facebook consciously did not block people unless they just said the most terrible heinous racist things. I didn't block them. Yeah. Because I did not want to be in an echo chamber. Yeah. Well, and then that discussion came up because my second exposure to incels was coming across um, some one particular person on Facebook. And I had seen several posts of his and just kind of ignored it because I didn't want to create an echo chamber. And then finding one that had a dick load of comments on it. And the post was all about, um, you know, how terrible women were for um, not accepting him and not banging him. And, and how women were just like the fucking worst. And then the vast majority of the comments on there was just a... A fucking circle jerk of yeah, women are the worst. It's fucking terrible. I know circle jerk probably <laughs> also a really good band in the nineteen seventies and eighties. <clears throat> really, I'm gonna have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, they were punk rock. Sounds band. terrible. Go circle jerks. You want to see a few circle jerk videos? Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that was before videos, brother. <laughs> oh, so you just be listening to the circle you just jerks. Just listen to the circle yeah. jerks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry guys. So anyway. I'm going to have to go find some music now. (laughs) So anyway, um, it was just this circle jerk of people like not just bashing women, because I can take that, but like we shouldn't have the right to vote. We shouldn't have the right to choose who it is that we fuck off. 
uh, who it is. Well, that too. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't have the right to choose who we marry. Um, shouldn't be allowed to speak unless our husband gives us permission to well, fuck off know, again. With, 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 <laughs> with the exception of the not having sex thing, I'm okay with this. Uh, uh-huh. I'm not either. I'm yeah, not either. I just I know, want to I get know. a rise out of you. I know. Um, but uh-huh. anyway, and so that was actually like the vast majority of the people that I have blocked on Facebook are all from this particular thread. Because it was so vile yeah. and so and, disgusting. And, and, and it seems to get that way. Yeah. Um, let's uh, kind of move past suicide. Let's, I, well, oh, do you have something else? Yeah, I, I did want to take a minute to to defend the members of, of the incel community. Mm-hmm. Um, because what I've seen in incels.me is a much smaller portion of them that are radicalized in the way you're describing. Yeah. I, I, I do think it's a small group. Yeah. And, and a, a much larger group of them who, for whatever reason, maybe they're worried about being outcasts or whatever, don't stand up to the radicalized factions. But they, if you look at their I, posts, they're, they are not engaging in that. I right. think, it's, I, I, I think it, it's the same thing as, you know, I was a member of the Republican Party for yeah. years, and most of them are small government, uh, you know, yeah. but... but but they can't shut up the the racist wing of the party. Yeah. Or the Democrats, most of them are moderate, middle of the road people, but they can't shut up the communists in the yeah. party. I think the same thing happens here. Yeah. You just can't shut up the radicals. Yeah. Uh, the, the vocal radicals. I, so, and I so, won't yeah, defend yeah. the radicals at all. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think that's the majority of them. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with you too. Uh, but but it, as a group, they tend to have. They appear, at least, and I, I keep coming back to this appear because there's not been been, been scientific data. It's just, but they appear to have a an inordinately high number of suicide murders. Yeah. yeah. And let's get into the murders a little bit. Okay. Uh, and, and, and talk about some of these. Uh, Elliot Roger is probably the the most important one of these. The, yeah. This one's really confusing to me. Yeah. I, let, let, let me talk about ahead. him a little go, bit, go, and then, then, then you can yeah. get in here. Elliot Roger was uh, a student of University of California uh, at Santa Barbara. Uh, and he put out tons of YouTube videos. He wrote a 137-page manifesto about his life. And if you watch these, he's a he's an attractive, he's a well-spoken man. Uh, and, and you look at him and you think, what what is it about this person that puts him in the incel community? And that and that's that's his his struggle too. He says over and over again, "I am the ultimate gentleman." Describes himself as that. I've got I've got a nice car. I dress nice. I'm not unattractive. I I, I compliment the ladies. I do all this stuff. And, 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 and they run off with they run off with Chad. They run off with Chad or Steve or whatever. I uh, saw the things he considered to be compliments. To oh, I, I did too. I'm, I'm going yeah. with what he said. I, I, I know. did all this stuff. Uh, now, when you get to seeing some of the stuff, it was very sexist. Mm-hmm. A lot of it. Uh, and in uh, in May of 2014, he ends up killing six people, injuring 14 others before shooting himself. Elliot Rogers. Uh, has committed these mass murders, and he says himself, "We're not, we're not reading into this." Mm-hmm. He says in his own words on his YouTube videos and on his in his 137 page manifesto that this was because he was an incel, he was involuntarily celibate. So yeah. I think we can take him at his word. This is why he did it. Okay, yeah. now. We know later on, going back to our discussion of, you know, is is incel a, a, a mental disorder? We know that he was on the Asperger uh, spectrum. He, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he he, he 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 was on that system. He had Aspergers, uh, so we know he had he had some other issues as well. We know that he struggled with depression his whole life. Yeah. So he had all of these issues, and then was in this community. Yeah. Well, and let, let's talk a moment about Aspergers for anybody who is not familiar. Um, that is. A that is a diagnosis of someone who typically and and of it's course, on the autism spectrum. Yeah, and this uh, has its own range, much like well, like autism because it's on the range yeah. on the spectrum. But um, of someone who mentally functions, uh, what would be considered to be normal. Um, however, they tend to have a severely impaired ability to pick up on social cues. So when they say something and someone rolls their eyes at it, that's they're not recognizing that as a yeah. sign that, that that person thinks what they said was wrong or ridiculous or whatever. Um, when someone forcibly laughs at a joke that's made just to try to be polite, they take that to mean they thought that person that that person actually thought what they said was funny. When somebody yeah. flirts with them, they have no clue unless you say, I'm flirting with you. Yep. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> 
that's definitely imagine that. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, well, and and some of these compliments that he gave. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, uh, you look really nice for a lady of your age. Yeah, yeah, uh, stuff like that. Is what, that is that a compliment? No. Well, and and what we would consider that is a backhanded compliment. Yeah, you know. You're old as fuck, but do you still manage to look all right for being old as fuck? Yeah. You know, you look really good for sixty. Well, I'm forty. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, but you know, Elliot Roger is has become kind of the poster boy for this this sub community. Um, yeah, they've even abbreviated it, and, and many of the members talk about going ER, going ER, or going or, Elliot or, Roger, or they they refer to themselves frequently as. Uh, the as ultimate gentleman. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I I treat ladies well. I do all this stuff. I I do all this for them. I I bought a nice car. I did all this stuff. Yeah. Why can't I? Uh, why Why can't I be successful? Uh, go ahead. Is it okay? First of all, two things that, that confuse me about him because the, a lot of the things they complain about, a lot of the things they complain yeah. about. Elliot Rogers would be considered a Chad by so many criteria. Mm-hmm. So yeah. why they rally behind him is one thing. But the other thing is, and I've seen what you're talking about, if you have somebody who by their own admission, by the admission of others, by every account, was an incel, why would you follow their example as a way to not be an incel? Like, wh- Because they blackpilled. Yeah, the, because they have accepted that that is what they are, and that yeah. it is inevitable it's, it's for them to be that. It's evolutionary, okay. and this guy did something about it. If they were copers, they would look at him and say, "I'm going to do things differently." But but that's fine. But they're confused about why they did all the things the incel did and end up an incel. Uh, I, I I think it's I think it's the same thing as people that put a guy fox mask mask on and say, uh, you know, I you know this guy stood up to the government. Well, he lost. Yeah. Well, you're still following his model. You're doing what he, what he did. Yeah. The same thing here. This guy lost, but yeah. but he was the standard bearer for the for the movement. Well, and they generally don't believe that you become an incel. They believe you've always been an incel, and that you wake up. But that's not the discussion they're having when they say, I've done X, Y, and Z, Y. These are copers transitioning. These are not okay. full black yeah, pills. Yeah, good okay, point. Good fine. Point. That is a good point. That, that is a good point. The next guy I want to talk about is Crip Harper Mercer. Uh, Crip Harper Mercer. Chris? Uh, yeah, Chris Harper Mercer. October of 2015, uh, he goes on a shooting spree, killing nine people and injuring eight others. And he himself said, I was inspired by Elliot Roger. Yeah. Uh, another member of the incel community. Uh, William Atchison, December of 2015, killed two people before, before killing himself. He signed his letters as either Elliot Roger or the ultimate gentleman. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing these. Th- 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 this seems to be something that's, that's copying. Uh, Nicholas Cruz, February of 2018, killed 17 people. This is the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. Mm-hmm. Uh, injured 17 others. Previously online, he wrote, Elliot Rogers will not be forgotten. Yeah. This seems to be something that is a big, big movement. Uh, there are other people out there that that that, that, that have been been uh, that have been been sucked into the movement that mm-hmm. never claimed to be. Uh, Alec Minasadian, uh, he makes his attack, kills ten, injures fourteen in Toronto. Uh, people have said that, that 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 he's he's an incel because he at one point applauded Elliot Roger on his Facebook. Yeah. There's other people that they they end up sucking into this. Go ahead. I, I just want to mention, uh, and you know. I'm not going to give him any credit. I'm not going to mention his name. He didn't deserve it. But I sent a screenshot earlier from incels.me. I want to read this. Uh, somebody made a uh, um, uh, a comment about building a spaceship. It, it, it was kind of uh, out of hyperbole or whatever. The response they got was, The time will come when we will have the numbers and the resources sufficient even for this comrade. There will be no limits for us. Nothing will stop us. We will be a purifying force and the basis for a new society. That's terrifying. Sound familiar? Anybody? Yeah. Comrade? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. comrade. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't know where that term comes from. But, yeah. <laughs> and maybe someone out there will know where the term comrade you know, comes from. You see all this stuff and you wonder, is there, is there something else going on? Uh, they went so far as to uh, uh, glorify the Virginia Tech shooter as an incel. Now, he, mm-hmm. never, he never once said he was, but in the, uh, in the interviews, they, they said he was an outsider. So they, yeah. they, they, they took his – I think you could take any, any mass shooter and say he was an outsider. Well, yeah. yeah that, like who was the real popular mass shooter? Like yeah. the, the Demi Lovato, you know? <laughs> Demi wow. Lovato, wow. Yeah. wow. Brad Pitt, you, was he ever like you, guys? You reached, you reached way back there for that. <laughs> wow. Um, 
So wait, you said who was the unpopular outsider or no, the popular who, outsider? Yeah. Who was who, no, who no, was the popular mass Manson. shooter? Manson. Mass shooter. Oh, mass shooter. Okay. Yeah, who was like really just had their life together? Yeah. They were popular. Everything is going like, great for me. I think I'm going to shoot. Yes, a bunch if of you're popular, up. you have other people kill people <laughs> yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're a Kennedy. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't just say that one, did I? Oh shit! You did. Kennedy. Yeah. I just caught that. I was busy over here popping my hip and writhing in pain and yeah best Kennedy joke I ever heard uh, oh Sam Kinison once said that it's, it's got to be tough being Teddy Kennedy and be the only brother that nobody cared enough about to shoot oh that's, that's pretty that's pretty why tough. do I feel bad for him now <laughs> <laughs> well that's kind of what I had on the incel on, on incels um, I, I gotta tell you it was a it was a kind of uncomfortable uh, kind of uncomfortable? discussion for me because I'm a school teacher right and I have seen these characteristics in people before mm-hmm. that, that, that I look at and, and had never thought about before. And I see how people like this would be ridiculed. Mm-hmm. I, understand, I understand where the depression comes from. I understand mm-hmm. where the rage comes from. Uh, I, I, if you're experiencing this, I hope you get help. I, yeah. You know, I hope you reach out to somebody. There are a few things I wanted to cover uh, on the emotional, psychological, and kind of uh, getting in, into their mindset a little bit, because uh, because I I think I'm starting to paint a picture of these people and 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 actually uh, uh, believe it or not understand them not necessarily agree but understand them. So one thing that I've noticed a lot of in in the movement is their tendency to over inflate what they're calling Chads and Stacys. Yeah. Um, even to the point of you know, uh, uh, hearing an interview with, with a character named Egghead, where he's Eggman. Eggman, sorry, it doesn't matter. I am the Eggman. Goo goo Eggman, where, where he's he's going on talking about how uh, even if if an incel is able to to pull a woman, you know, it's through a lot of work and they make a lot of money and all this. Whereas a Chad, or, or it just happens to him. Yeah, Chad just happens to him. You know, you'll have a Stacy out there in what he described as a puddle of homo uh, of hobo piss. Uh, uh, having an orgy with Chad, Thad, and Brad, Brad. Yeah. Um, without even trying. And really interesting thing that I equated that to, when we were doing our research on uh, uh, polygamy, mm-hmm. one of the really big things that the polygamy... Po- polyamorous, mostly. Po- well, yeah, polyamorous. Uh, uh, um, text kind of addresses is dealing with jealousy. And, and they actually talk a lot about meeting your, your partner's partners. Metamors. Metamors is the term they use. I don't know. I wasn't trying to get you to use that term. Yeah. I was just giving them the yeah. term. But meeting your partner's partners because the, the mind's natural tendency is to think of yourself as this lowly creature and everyone else is the Superman. Like, everybody else has their fucking life together, but I'm the one who doesn't. And I, I, I do wonder if, if a lot of their problem comes from, one, experiencing that kind of jealousy on a global scale as opposed to a very localized scale to... Pinpointed to, a, to that person. Yeah, exactly. And then being in an echo chamber that kind of encourages... The uh, the thought that these quote unquote chads are out there just having this great life, you know, I I, I do wonder orgies all the time, twenty four seven, constant orgies. And, you know, that's really funny because that's also in, in another interview on, on the polyamory thing. Like there there were the video was it answering was... questions that monogamous people have, and like one yeah. of the questions was, "Is all your sex orgies?" And they were like. <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, "Do you know how hard an orgy is to organize? You know how much work that is." <laughs> yes, but but and then one of them was just like, "Yes, all of it, all the time, every every bit of it." <laughs> I'm always having orgies, <laughs> but 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 anyway, Clip no, that. yeah, clipped that. Um, <laughs> but right any- now even <laughs> anyway, so but I I I do wonder how much of this, and especially dealing with their age. I mean, we're we're talking mm-hmm. about late teens through twenties. When you don't know shit anyway. You don't. Yeah. God, right? And, you know, you have people, first of all, they don't know shit about women. In fact, if you look at their own really? context, there a lot of them are striving for the Stacys that they so love. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Second of all, the women they're talking to don't know what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Go for um, a Gwen. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the women that they want, that they're talking to don't know what they want to, to the point of Eggman. He was talking about getting a girlfriend, 
and getting her in bed, and the girlfriend was like, hit me, and him just freaking the fuck out, right? Yeah, he said that was a reprehensible action. I think I would say the same thing if my girlfriend said, hit me. However, just maybe a minute before that, he was talking about how um, if somebody told him, you know, just take a shower and put on some cologne and, and like, put on a smile and go out there, you'll be fine. Um, like, how he would respond to that. And he said that he would write a rap about, um, and help me remember what all it was about, um, let's see, how he wanted to push a woman out of a car. Uh, forced um, oh, illiteracy. Forced illiteracy and <laughs> that women should have their right to vote taken away. Yeah, so, I mean, so... I it, vote for him. <laughs> it's I'll push not, you out of that chair. It's not that he had this extreme desire to, like, be kind to women, or maybe it was just some kind of artistic expression, but he really did. Or but maybe the, his black pill hasn't processed all the way yet. But the point is... He had this woman who, at least from what she said, knew a little bit about what she wanted, told him that, and it freaked him out. This tells me about so- something about where he is yeah, yeah. And, 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 and what he was prepared to do. And I think that... Not comfortable with himself yet, yeah. much that less confusion, anybody else. Yeah. And and not, go ahead. Yeah, that confusion is kind of what's playing into this, where... He thinks he's an adult now, yeah. and he's going to put on his adult pants and tell the whole world how, how the world should work. Yeah. And it's very clear to me that he's confused. When, yeah. when that's our job, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Ex- yes, yeah. we're the adults <laughs> that need to tell the world how. But, yes. but no, I mean, it, the, it's these very uh, confused young people, and I'm not, I'm not knocking them for being confused. I was young. confused. I'm say, I, I can know. remember being 23, 24. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, uh, didn't know shit. Yeah, who I think I... Who I am and, and who I thought I was has changed a lot in that, that period of Thank time. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I was an asshole. Yeah. Was. Well, now, now I'm a You're different, a different kind asshole. of asshole. <laughs> yeah. different asshole. Um, I've, I've evolved. So one of the things that I wanted to kind of take a look at is, is where, what's driving this community to be a thing? Um, and I think at least part of it is the highly sexualized community Uh uh, uh, or society rather I think that um, because whenever you you read these threads because I was on there even though I have a vagina yeah um, (laughs) don't tell anybody but um they're gonna blow your house up they would have to find their way to a woman's house first yeah that's true fair point and it's heavily (laughs) insured so don't worry about it also that (laughs) yeah Um, so anyway just don't be home but yeah, right. Um, so the the women that they're chasing after essentially are the women in the magazines, yeah. um, the women on in movies, and and Let's I'm not even talking reality. I'm not even talking about the the actresses. I'm talking about the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the characters in TV shows and movies and the pictures or, in, the, in the magazines, not the humans or that even the pictures that, are of. You know, even if you're not going to Hollywood, I mean, uh, the, 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 the porn. If they, if they, yeah, they've yeah. watched that also stuff. Also that. That's an idealized There's a version. lot of talking about porn in the yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, there is. And and, and if, that, if that is your uh, understanding of what, what sex is, yeah. you're a confused individual. And what individual. women are. And what yeah. women are, you are a confused individual. Yeah, and so that would I, be like the Fast and the Furious being your understanding of what driving yeah, is. That, that was your driving yeah. education class. <laughs> yeah. You had to watch the Dukes of Hazard to learn how to drive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a, you, you reached way back there in time, didn't you? I'm old. Leave <laughs> yeah. me alone. So anyway, um, but I wonder if that. Um, I could have been talking about the movie. I mean. That sexualization in our society is part of what has driven them to both um, pursue these women that are. In society's practices, out of their league. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and if it has driven their feeling of rejection, um, and, and not necessarily, I'm not excusing their behavior per se, but I do kind of understand where this could be coming how many, from. How many real women have they blown off because it's not it's not Sandra yeah. Bullock? And they well, talk and about blowing them off. Yeah. 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 They actually, um, so before we move on to that, um, I... I just want to touch on, you know, we've talked a lot about, not necessarily on this show, but um, a lot of 
talking happens in the media about how um, how emaciated models impact oh, yeah. um, what young girls think that they are supposed to look like. There have been laws passed in the UK about, you know, a model cannot be below this. I don't remember exactly what the laws are, and I know there are a few different ones, but I know one is like can't be below a certain BMI, yeah. can't be below a certain waist size, um, you know, certain ratios to height and, and weight and all that stuff. Um, and so we've talked a lot about how that stuff impacts young girls and a little bit about how it impacts young boys. But what I expect is that in the incel communities, you're looking at the very outside of who's impacted by that the most. Um, you know, we can look at this, this wide gap here of people who are somewhat impacted. And as you go further down on this bell curve, you're reaching this 1%, this, two percent of men on this side i guess and women on this side we'll put it there um who are drastically impacted by that and and so yeah i think that's kind of what we're looking at there and the fact that they have autism makes sense i mean i think yeah. most people are able to like hear the bullshit yeah and then yeah. pick up on the social cues and say yeah maybe not yeah and then the further out you go on, on that uh, uh asperger's you know or autistic autism spectrum, spectrum yeah. you say they need to be told directly. And when society is directly telling them this and expecting them to do this, yeah. Yeah. they don't fucking get it. Yeah. 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 Well, and, I agree. And I want to stop and take a moment here to say, in this show, we are not saying that all autistic people are right. incels. No, and no. we are not saying that all incels are autistic. Right, no. um, Some are just assholes. There is just, there's a Venn diagram and there's a correlation. There's autistic here and like incels here. And there's a, an overlap. Yeah. Um, again, watch the YouTube because yeah. I just did a whole diagram and you missed it. You missed it. You um, hand and arm signals. But thank Works you to you guys out there. Yeah, exactly. Look at this graph. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and she so, made them with her boobs in case you were wondering. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but moving on to there, one of the things that I I saw a lot of, and I'm going to reference that episode, that particular episode of Incel Cast with Eggman on it. Um, he was talking about like the 80% of women who rail on incels and tell them that they're worthless and tell them that they're unattractive and tell them that, you know, and, and say, and he, he used this particular phrase so many times, LOL at your life. Yeah. Um, and, and that was 80% of women. Older people may, may recognize, uh, uh, fuck your life. That may, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, but 80% of yeah, women FML. yeah Fuck my life yeah 80% of women that did that but then simultaneously argued that society needed to be kept in such a way that it was still acceptable for incels and everyone else to put on blast the other the bottom 20% of women who are um, fat stupid unattractive um like it, it was this strange dissonance you where need to protect me but don't protect them they don't matter yeah and and specifically like this group of people needs to be uh, i think he said kept in check or something yeah. like that yeah. like they need to realize they're not good enough to be loved and appreciated where do you think you fall buddy well and that's, <laughs> that's the thing i could i think we could take this group and we could take that group and if they would just be nice enough to each other just just fuck each other just yeah. just go you know yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm just saying you got two groups of people that are having trouble tab a no, slot b go <laughs> you know? yeah. um and, and I do recognize this whole episode is very heterocentric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the whole, but, but again, the society actually, is very heterosexual. It is, and that, and the incel community is. I mean, women very, aren't even allowed into the yeah yeah you know, into the main uh, main web website of it. Yeah, yeah. and um, and you know why you know why we don't see a huge gay incel community. They all have orgies all the time. That, constant, all the time. Yeah, constant, constant, constant orgies. orgies. Yeah, yeah. and, and they're, they're, they're Mormons. No, what? More? I don't know. I just I don't, I, I don't throw that out there. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. I was slow. That was yeah. me. Just yeah. insulted all the Mormons. Yeah. So here's another interesting... Just saying, because I love my Mormon brothers. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know 
where you guys have necessarily fallen on this, and I wonder if uh, my vaginal structure has had any impact on it. Clip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, I found myself really torn when it came to exploring this community because I had two visceral reactions. <laughs> One of which being... Um, I wanted to like, I, I got very defensive and I wanted to tear into all those motherfuckers about how, if you've got, if you hold the belief that like, I shouldn't be able to vote because of my genital structure. Um, no. I, I don't think you should be able to vote because you're a fucking terrible yes. person. S sweetheart, sweetheart. I, it, it's not your genital I'm structure that keeps me from wanting you to vote. It's, it, it's your, it's your smaller cranial cavity and the fact that your brain is not as, as developed as a male's. I will not kill anyone. Today. <laughs> I will not kill anyone today. No, I'm kidding. I mean, I I won't. <laughs> I don't have to tell myself that not to do it. Um, but anyway, I might. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so there was that reaction. You say this days after she, <laughs> a day after she passes her license to carry test. Uh, hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I saw her target. Oh. I don't, I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm yeah. a little worried. You goddamn right. Not nearly as worried as John's target. <laughs> no, my, no, you're fine. Say all you want. So anyway, there was there was that reaction, and I think that's kind of expected. Um, and and my other reaction surprised even me, a little bit. Um, I kind of wanted to go onto those forums, because how are they going to know? And just be like... Pretend like you had a penis? Well, to get in. <laughs> and then go in... Here it is, guys. Yep. Yeah. She pretended like she had a penis to get in. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say, it's not like I haven't been sent dick pics before. And I could totally Shh, just I told use you not to tell John about that. I said pics. Oh. I you weren't the only one. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I didn't no, send her I'm a picture. Just I, just, that there. I, I just whipped it out for her right there. I, I knew I knew you had sent them because when I went through a dick photo album, some of them you couldn't tell unless you clicked on it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the other reaction was like, I kind of wanted to go onto these forums or reach out to these people and be like, I know I'm not a Stacy, but um, you talk about how like all these women are really mean to you, and like if. If you're willing to be nice, I'll be nice, and we can talk and have a conversation. And I just want to kind of like try to change your mind about how terrible women are. But but here's Good the thing that. that here's the thing where I think you or any other woman would have issues. They have built a whole community. First of all, they don't allow women in their in their group. I think that speaks to it. But and we see this with so many movements. The movement has yeah, become. But they get to do that. They do, they, and that, mm -hmm. that's fine. But I think it speaks to something. Uh, the movement has almost become bigger than the goal. Like, the goal was fix the problem, but now it's about the movement. And I think there are many of them who would be incentivized to um, try to uh, 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 demolish or, or sabotage, that's the word, sabotage the relationship. So when it went bad, they could say, see, I told you it was going to go bad. I was right. Black pill all day. Black pill all day. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think you're probably right. Um, oh, I got enough gas to fly to Pittsburgh yeah. over here, man. Uh, but, but uh, all right, I, I kind of want to do a, do a round robin here to kind of finish this off because you know, we, we've kind of discussed this. Uh, and I, I mentioned when I started off this, I was very much a believer that there really wasn't such a thing as an incel. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a it, it was a, a, a artificially created thing. So kind of around. What do you think? Uh, real thing or construct? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the very basic idea of somebody who wants to get laid and can't is a real thing. I think the broader ideas of the community are a construct by young, confused males. And, and I, I somewhat empathize with them because I've been a young, confused male. I didn't take it that far. But, I mean, I, I understand what it's like. I think they're going to age out, and the movement's never going to go beyond some small portion of the teen to 20s population. I think if you'd have found this community when you were 16 or 17, you'd have, had a, 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 you'd have uh, uh, understood it? I think I would have checked them out. I think I would have had... 
uh, more empathy toward their views. I don't think I'd have ever got involved. And I think the thing that would have pushed me away was their uh, heavy misogyny. I think if they took that out, like the, and we need to take our rage out on women, I think I, I could have fallen into I could, this I community. think ma- yeah. ma- maybe the original, Alana's original, yeah. original yeah. construct of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think, uh, Madam Mistress? Real thing or construct? Uh, real thing. By the way, I just joined incels.me, even with a vagina. <laughs> just wanted to see if I could. They didn't make you send a picture? No. They do ask if you're male or female, though. And you put male? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so real Done. thing. Yeah, I, I think it is a real thing. Um, <clears throat> I think that it is symptomatic of significant issues in our society. Um, things like how it is that we treat people. Um, things like hypersexualization um, and yeah I think those are probably two of the biggest yeah. ones I think if we um, start teaching our children whenever somebody asks them out or makes a an advance at them to not laugh in their face um, yeah. when we teach Don't our, be rude. yeah when we teach our children to firmly but politely say no um, if they don't want that particular advance, um, I think you mitigate a lot of the problems that we do see from um, people on the autistic spectrum, specifically in, in the kind of Asperger range, in that they need that firm and clear no. Um, but be polite, because it's just nice to be polite to people. Yeah. Well, and, and I think this is symptomatic of humans' tendency to abuse power structures. Yeah. I mean, if you fall in, in, a, in a high power structure on the sexual power structure spectrum, and you abuse that power in order to be rude to the people around you, I think you're probably a shit person who would do that if you were president or if you had a lot of money or whatever. And I think it's just broadly teaching people to be good people regardless of where you fall on any spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I gotta tell you where I am on this, and and, and I've I've been moving as I've studied and even as we've talked here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think incel is a condition you are in it's not something you are. Yeah. Right. I agree with that. I think I a agree. lot of people I, I, grow I, I, out of it. I, I think it's easy to be involuntarily celibate mm-hmm. for a period of time. Yeah. But I don't think that, that it's a it's something that, 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 that you are. I don't think it's gay. It can be yeah. lifelong. Well, but I, I think if it's lifelong, it's because you've made it lifelong. And, and that's I'm not saying that it's not. Yeah. I'm saying it can be lifelong. But, um, for instance, Eggman, who uh, we've talked about a lot on... It, he broke the um, black pill. Yeah, he actually um, no longer considers himself to be an incel. Has a girlfriend, and um, he aged out. Yeah, yeah largely he. Gr- I would guess, grew up, figured out who he was, figured out what kind of woman he actually wanted to spend his time with, and made that work. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, I think that's probably the best explanation. It's a condition you're in, not something you yeah. are. And well, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the, and, and, and I'm, I'm a little afraid that's going to be insulting to some people, but I, I, I really think that's what what it is. I think I don't think it's something that anybody is doomed to be in. Yeah. I want to talk about studying for the show just for a yeah. moment before we close out. This was actually a really tough one to do, and and me and Anna can always tell when we're researching one that's tough. And and tough, I mean, because whenever I I watch these videos, if it's a subject I already agree with, I try and watch it like and argue with them and if it's a subject i don't agree with i try and watch it and sympathize i always try and go against my own grain yeah Yeah. and i I think anna largely does the same and we can always tell we're researching for shows that are tough because we just like are already at a heightened sense of emotion it it strains our relationship a little bit you know just to just to be in that and and I'm glad to be responsible for straining your relationship. Exactly. With this. Wait, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we always come around and we say, yeah. we, we even very actively communicate and say, it's the show, it's the show we're studying, yeah. let's talk yeah, about cause it. Yeah, because it was like, we started listening to one of these podcasts, and, and it was like two hours long. Um, and one of the guys particularly was talking especially fast. And so I normally speed up anything like that and we had to like slow it down to regular speed so it was still going to take a full two hours to go through just that Mm. one episode and um it was like we started that got kind of into it and we both got on edge yeah just like completely 
and we're kind of snapping at each other. It was not cool. I don't think anybody comprehends how much effort goes into the, some of these shows. Some yeah. of them are easy, but there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's those. This was one of those weeks that, that I spent hours looking at, well, yeah. watching uncomfortable videos, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know. Well, and and one torture of torture was a really bad one. For that me. was yeah tough. Um, but yeah, I think the thing that I want to want to express here is I think what we found in the short time in which we were both researching the same thing and the the it just kind of created a, a grind between the two of us that's not normally there. Um, I think it exemplifies exactly what deep diving into this culture can do to you. Sure, we, in were, in, the way yeah. we were in it yeah. for four or five days. Yeah, yeah. In, in, and affect the way that you interact with other human beings. And, and I think for myself, that is one of the biggest arguments for somebody who feels like they are an incel. I understand wanting to find people who feel the same way as you. I understand that feeling of, oh my God, I found my people, I'm not alone and I'm not crazy. Um, but, but consider you may be crazy. <laughs> but Or maybe all your people are crazy. Yeah. But um, try to find a positive outlet. And, yes. and that's one yes. of the yeah. things that Jordan Peterson, uh, the mind doctor. Who I really like. Yeah. Um, and, and a few other people are trying to do is they're trying to find positive means for these people to... Um, get in real support groups and not negative communities and not negative echo chambers. I, I, like I will that. say this. If y'all, if you're not familiar with Jordan Peterson and you decide you've heard all about this and you want to go look him up, uh, be a little careful. There's a, uh, there's a YouTube video out there that says that, that Jordan Peterson supports Hitler. <laughs> they took a clip of something he said uh, off of this, where he mm -hmm. said that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that if Hitler really wanted to be successful, he wouldn't have killed the Jews. He would have enslaved them and made them, put them in work camps. Well, they just took a clip off and said Hitler should have enslaved the Jews. Uh, Jordan oh, wow. Peterson is not a not a crazy Nazi. That's a that's that a clip we'll see of. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just want to throw that out there because okay. they've heard this name and somebody's going to go type yeah. it in and they're going to see that and go, these guys are crazy listening to this guy. That's yeah. not what he said. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, this has been a, a, a really interesting show and uh, uh, taxing. Yeah. Very, very yeah. Incredibly yeah. taxing. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, so we don't have a show to recommend this week, um, but I do want to... Nothing seemed to quite quite flow in with Incel. Yeah. 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 And no, we're, we're going to recommend the Incel podcast. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Um, Please don't. <laughs> well, and, and the guy actually is no longer part of that community and won't be making them anymore. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. Um, Maybe if he like starts something afterward, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's going to do that. Former incel, yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, life um, after incel. Yeah. Um, but I do want to recommend that anybody who um, has listened to this show and feels like they identify with this community, um, I I would not recommend going in and um, and joining something like incels dot me. No. Um, because as be. as we've it's described here, it is an echo. As we've described here, it is an echo chamber, um, and it it does promote kind of a, a a grinding psyche between you and and other people that you're interacting with. And I don't think that that's healthy. But I would say, reach out to somebody. Talk to somebody. Um, whether that talk is, to me if you want to yeah, talk to somebody. Yeah, I was going to say whether that is reaching out to a therapist. Whether that is. Um, there's actually a really good app. I don't remember what it's called, um, but there are some some really cool apps where. Uh, oh God, it's like have tea with me or something like that. Yeah. Um, nine cups of tea or seven cups of tea, something like that, where you can get on and actually kind of talk through your problems with people, and it's completely free. They're not licensed therapists, um, but they will sometimes just saying it out loud helps though. yeah well yeah. and and i'll say this um before i actually started seeing a therapist and before i actually got diagnosed um i was i was going through a depressive period and i had found out about that app and i'd known about it for a while and i finally just downloaded it and i got on there and i started talking to somebody and and just kind of talking about what it was that was going through my mind at the time and it helped 
so yeah, much. Yeah. In, and it any was kind actually, of, in, any time that you talk about something, yeah. I do pool hall therapy. You know, I, yeah. uh, I sit at the pool table, listen to listen to blues, and talk to my buddies, bitch about my problems. That helps. Yeah. Well, uh, and you know. and that was actually getting on that app and talking to them was one of the things that keyed me in that I probably actually needed to talk to a licensed therapist. Yeah, yeah. You know. And sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. Do hey, that, or the, reach out to us. That works. The too. other thing that I would really recommend if you're having issues and thinking of going to the incel community is go to patreon.com slash six pack philosophy that's where I was check out to. the various <laughs> tiers yeah, yeah, yeah. you can get your weekly dose of philosophy and I think that these incels largely have philosophy and, problems and, and if you just need to have sex for $500 you can sleep with a host exactly exactly prostitution's going strong <laughs> um, but anyway uh, check out our Patreon if you do support the work we do because it is a labor of love. It yeah, does for, cost for money. As, for as little as $1, you, yes. can, uh, you, know, you can support the show. Uh, you might save an incel. You might. You might. You never know. Uh, it shows like these. shows like this. Is it? Hey, uh, I'm, I'm just curious. If they want any of our merchandise like this awesome canvas back here or that shirt you've got on or, uh, you know, what, what can they do? It's teespring.com slash stores slash six-pack philosophy. But the easiest thing to do is go to teespring.com and just search six-pack philosophy yeah. and all our merch will come all out. our Three merch words, is there all spelled out lots of cool stuff yeah. uh so yeah this has been a lot of fun yes are, right. are we good to go incels I are not nihilists so. we didn't touch on that oh they're yes. not they, they try and claim the term no no no, no not nihilists at all yeah no, no anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in we've enjoyed it and we hope you have too cheers cheers see you next week Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 